So out of every Nintendo handheld that I've ever owned, the new 3DS XL is my favorite for emulation purposes. It's what I think the most powerful out of them. I mean, of course, it's the new 3DS XL. And it's just a nice form factor overall. I really like the clamshell design that the 3DS has. And I don't like the small form factor of the, like, the regular size 3DSs. It has to be the XL. And one of the reasons I like it so much is because it can emulate if you put custom firmware on it. And today we're going to be testing out and looking at how you can put PlayStation 1 games on your 3DS. So something I have to mention here is that this only works on the new 3DS. You can't do this on the old 3DS. I mean, I guess you can. I don't I haven't tried it though. But it won't run at playable speeds. It might just like run really slowly. So I wouldn't recommend ever trying this if you're not on a new 3DS. So that's really it. Let's get into the computer aspect of it. So welcome back. We are on the computer now because we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how you can get some PS1 games on your 3DS. So you're going to want to go to these two websites that I have just right here that will get you PopStation GUI and this PlayStation 1 forwarder creator. So like it says, the old 3DS is too weak to play it. Um good speeds so you're gonna want to have a new 3ds for this once you download those they should pop up in folders like this you can like extract it and stuff but what you want to which what you are going to want to do go to your desktop folder and make a new folder called ps1 to 3ds cia make a folder called psx make a folder called psx roms make one called ps1 forwarder just drag and drop this folder into there and then just drag and drop that pop station gui folder. this folder has all of your bin files that are like this which i don't know where, like where they are from but the real runs you're going to want to use is from psx roms you're going to want to download a ps1 rom and open up both of the different softwares, PS1 Forwarder Creator and Pop GUI. So you might boot into this and it'll have like the language set to like whatever this is, but go here and just set it to English if it's not set to English, cause mine wasn't for some reason and I'm not sure why. So go there and this is where you choose the ISO you wanna do. So you're going to want to move your ROM that you, the ISO that you downloaded to the PSX ROMs folder and just choose it from there and uh, generate eBoot perform right now. And it should just take a few seconds. Okay. So once it has finished, oh. Uh, here it is. Um, you're gonna wanna go here to your Pop Station GUI folder. Go to PSP game to whatever game you downloaded. Like for my case, it's Bomberman World. And it should have this here eboot.pbp. Now you don't need to do anything with that file name right now, but open up PS1 Forwarder Creator. And what you're actually going to want is a, like, um, banner image for the game so you can just go on to google and search that up so what i'm doing is bomberman world banner image go here images you could really just use any image but i want to find like a good image bomberman world great so let's use this bomberman world save it Bomberman World Image. Didn't need to save it as an image. But then go over here, go to Banner Image, 
Go to downloads or wherever you saved it. There you go. And that's what it's going to look like on your home screen on the top screen. So that's pretty cool. Um, then choose your game. So go to the place we were just at. Da, 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 da. PlayStation GY. Gonna go to Bomberman World, that one. Um, just choose, just rename it to Bomberman World or whatever game you're doing because this will. Oh my gosh, I had caps lock on. I just like putting PS1 at the end of the uh, title of the game. You don't really have to. So you can just put these two the same as the same. And you just press build CIA. It'll ask you where you want it to be put. You just put it. I would go back here. Oh god, I went too far. PS1 to CIA. PSX ROMs. You should probably put it there. So then you just put the name that you just had and save it. Hey, 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 this is me from the future here telling you don't do what I just did. Don't rename that. Keep it eBoot, how it was, all capitalized. Don't change the name. Because I changed it, and you'll see it in a second, but it didn't save as a CIA. So I had to go back and redo it. Don't do what I just did. Don't be an idiot. Keep it the same name. Oh, yes. It's building the ROM, building the CIA. It's finished, so now it should be there. Let's go back. Oh, shoot, I went to the wrong place. Okay, wait. Give me a second. Go to PSX ROMs. We should have a... Bomberman World PS1 and it just says file that's weird but let's go to properties see what it says just says test file this is dot CIA so I'm gonna trust that it is a CIA so then you can just oh, wrong place so then you can just eject your SD card and head back over to the 3ds so I actually messed up twice while doing this. The first one is not even putting the file in the SD card, which is a mistake I made. The second one was the one I just mentioned to you. Oh, shoot. Uh, renaming the oh, file. Oh, my gosh. I keep forgetting to do stuff. Yeah, I've messed up. Uh, that was disgusting. And there it is. So install and delete because it's a pretty big file. It's like 300 megabytes and some of them can go up to 500 megabytes, which is half a gigabyte. So you want to save some space on your SD card and just wait for that to be done. So once the installation finishes, you can just Press OK with any button, go back, and press Start to exit, and it should show up as a game. It'll be right there. You can launch it just like any other game, and it should run well. You can make a folder called PlayStation 1 and put all the games that you have there, which is what I did. I don't really like using screwdrivers on the screen because I feel like it just scratches the screen, so I don't know why I actually do it. But once you actually go into the game, it runs very well. And it has the virtual console menu thing in the bottom. I don't think it works, though. It brings up a different screen. It doesn't have, like, Nintendo's virtual console. It just has, like, a quit and s start stuff. And the controls are a little confusing just because of where A and B and X and Y are placed, but it's completely manageable. And if you want to emulate PS1 games, you already know where these are from. So yeah, that's really it. That's really all I have to show you now. Because, I mean, there's nothing really to show. It's just PlayStation 1 games running on this thing. 
it's on a 3DS, so I mean, you have to keep that in mind. It's not going to be the best performance, but it's doing really well for a 3DS. So I, I don't own any PlayStation 1 games, so I'm probably just going to delete all of these after this video gets uploaded, uh, so I don't get arrested. This actually runs really well, and if you own any PlayStation 1 games, I'd actually recommend doing this because it's super easy to do. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and see you next time, Bye bye